Hello there, Taurus. Welcome to your uh, mid-month reading. So um, as I mentioned for all the other signs, um, this is going to run from December 17 until this, the end of the month, December 31st, mainly because um, I'm going to be swamped. It's the holiday season next week, so I will not be able to do your weekly, and so I'm condensing it into two weeks, okay? Um, I have a I remember last week you've got a really exciting um, image and I feel like the energy lifted a little bit so I feel like I might be speaking to another crowd um, which is good because the energy last week was a little bit tragic it was just like it made me really sad um, this time I feel like it's it's changed a little bit so I, I think I'm speaking to a different crowd that's uh, watching this so either way when I was shuffling out the spread what I see is um, I see this woman she's um, she's wearing like Victorian clothing and I don't know why I keep getting you know uh, clothing or time periods from like way past and not anything in present time like why can't they just wear trousers and you know uh, a t-shirt but she's a Victorian woman um, it seems like you know it's the dress from from a long time ago it's kind of poofy and she's pacing back and forth in her parlor there are two chairs in front of her she looks like she's 30 and she looks like she could be a mother like a wife uh, she definitely looks like she she has children but I don't see any kids I don't see a husband but um, either way uh, there are two couches and then there's like a table in the middle and there's a telephone and she's pacing back and forth hoping the telephone would ring. So she was just pacing back and forth and in my vision it didn't ring. She she just paces and then it stops. So that signifies to me that you're definitely waiting on a phone call for sure. Literally, you're waiting around for a phone call. You're waiting around for important information. You're waiting around for people to make up their mind and so that you they can give you the signal and that you can move forward. And I feel for many of you, this is more on the business front. This is more like um, the fact that she's pacing. I feel like she's concerned about somebody. Like, what's the status? Uh, are they going to be okay? Is there anything I need to do on my end to follow up? Um, and I honestly feel like for some of you, you might be dealing with children um, who might have gotten <clears throat> into some type of legal trouble um, or they are like, <clears throat> they're, they're um, I'm seeing like, you know, possibly, okay, and I, I don't want to um, relay this information. It's not going to apply to all. But I do see like possibly getting a DUI, getting arrested, getting stopped or something like that. I, I feel like some dealing with younger kids who might have uh, legal issues, possibly like the principal calling home and, you know, saying like, why wasn't your kid in school, like cutting class? Uh, because the woman is in her 30s, so I would imagine her kids would be like, you know, um, younger than 15, I would hope. So, um, younger than 15. So, and it's also different time period. So, you know, if women uh, had children at a younger age, then they would be possibly 15 or younger. So that's just my assessment. And um, I feel like so there, there's like news, uh, worried about news, worried about communication from somebody. I also feel like you might have visitors and then you're picking them up at the airport and you know, they're, you're, you're waiting on news. Like what's going on? When is your flight going to get here? Is your flight delay? So I see elements of travel delays, anticipation, waiting for a person, waiting to work out the logistics. And then I'm also feeling in the work front too, um, I'm seeing people who are handling like complex situations, like um, complex cases that affect other people's lives, okay? And then you're just like waiting for clearance, waiting for, um, I'm hearing a smear on somebody's record, like a, a smear on somebody's record, and I'm, I'm seeing smeared fingerprints. So it could, you could be in law enforcement, you could be doing something related to scanning people's fingerprints and um, trying to make sure if the fingerprints match a certain person. So, you know, I, I, I do feel that like clearance or um, 
things that are on their criminal record and, and things like that. So that's what I'm, I'm picking up. And then at work too, um, waiting on decisions of other people. Okay. So it's like things escalating to the, um, chain up through the chain of command. And so people are kind of sitting on it, not really making a move or they thought they might have had, you know, a certain amount of money to, um, devote to a project and then the project gets scrapped and then you're waiting to see like before you know the project is getting scrapped I feel like people are are waiting for you know that final say and then I feel as well um, I'm seeing you looking through a lot of papers like sorting through um, things like an employee uh, file an employee file um, not that you're snooping. I don't feel that you're snooping, but you're trying to figure out like, okay, what would they qualify for? Where did they go to school? Um, things like that. Like um, you might be in a supervisory position and you're looking through somebody's files, one of your employees, and you're trying to understand them. Um, you could also be working with younger children, looking through their, their transcript, trying to, you know, figure out what kind of student they are. So things like that. You're you're definitely in a position of power and you're making some big decisions that affect other people's lives. But I also feel like things do have to get escalated to the chain up through the chain of command. Um, I'm seeing a lot of dealings when it comes to in-laws. Okay. A lot of family and a lot of in-laws. So I, I'm, I'm feeling some of you are dreading a trip to go see in-laws. Not that you don't like the people. I feel like you like the people. It's just like, um, it's kind of a burden because I feel like you have things you need to do. You have things you need to take care of. So this is something that you're doing, oh, out of obligation. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, out of obligation. So I felt that energy um, emotionally obligated to do something. So you might have, you know, you, you might be married and, um, you know, your wife, for example, says, oh, my, my, my brother is hosting a big party or my brother wants us to visit because he visited us last time. So you might have to, you know, make that trip. And I feel as well, um, you know, you could have a, a husband who wants to spend time with his family and then you might have to, you know, take the the kids and and travel with him to see his family so there is a sense of like emotional obligation that you're you're you have to do something because it's expected of you okay um so let's sweep that energy aside because there is an overall message here that is a that that's a little bit deeper because the other things i feel were more on the mundane front and it's really interesting with uh taurus reading there are always layers the first thing is just like the mundane, the everyday things. And then underneath that is this undercurrent, which is like a really complex story. So what I feel is, um, I feel like someone loves you a lot more than you love them. And I'm so sorry for cross watchers. Um, you know, obviously this reading is meant for the Torian person. Okay, I feel like there's somebody who loves you a lot more than you love them and you're trying to assess the situation and I feel like that's for those in relationships, for those in relationships. I feel like the other person will give the, the shirt off their back and I definitely feel like you're holding back. I feel like you are very picky and there's nothing wrong with that. We, we can be as picky as we want. It's our life, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not making any type of a judgment call. What I feel, though, is, um, you know, one day when they do something amazing, you love them. And then the next day when they throw their tantrums or when they're difficult or when you feel like they're being petty, you might love them less. And so every day you are constantly reassessing your feelings for this person. And... Um, I feel like it's a little bit unfair for the other person because they give you their all. They give you 100%. And, um, you know, we all have our tantrums. We all go through bad days. 
but I feel like emotionally they're very very consistent every day with you they're very very consistent but I feel like you are not as consistent as they are towards you so I feel almost like holding a little bit of a grudge from your end and I also feel like you might you might constantly assess the relationship and um, what it seems like to me underlying you know uh, in the underlying current is that you might not be in love with them that's why you're constantly reassessing the relationship because when we love you know and you know when you're in love so that's why I feel like this reading is more for the Taurus people not so much the cross watchers because the Taurus will know whether or not they're in love and I feel like you care about the other person you care you really care and it's kind of you know you, you've been in the relationship for quite some time it's kind of hard for you to imagine anything otherwise like um, not having them in your life or God forbid like something happens to them you would be very devastated so I feel like you know there is a certain degree here where you really care about that person but I feel almost like this constant reassessment. Am I in love? I, I, I loved them yesterday and today they did this one thing and I, I keep dwelling on it and I'm fixated on this one thing. So I love them a little bit less today. But I feel like you're constantly reassessing, reassessing, reassessing. Okay. Um, that's, that's what I, I was picking up. And... Um, I feel almost as though your heart is elsewhere as well. Your heart might be elsewhere. So I feel like you have emotionally walked out of a situation, like emotionally, like physically you're still there, mentally you're still there. But emotionally, something has gone awry within the past few months with you guys where you stay in a situation because of that emotional obligation but you're not 100 percent emotionally invested you're not emotionally there i feel like i feel like you're just a warm body in that chair in that role in that capacity you're, you're just kind of like going through the motions that's what it feels like to me like emotionally you're not invested anymore um, so if it's a job, for example, you know, if it's a job, you're just a warm body going in, clocking in your hours, uh, taking your lunch break, and then, you know, clocking out. Like, you you actually do the work, but I feel like in terms of personal enjoyment and personal satisfaction, job satisfaction, I, I feel like it's not really there anymore. And then I feel like if it's a relationship, um, there's a, a sense of vacancy and you know the other person loves you you know they they really really love you and you care about them so i i feel like it's really important for you to kind of sort out your feelings here i feel like the two of you have been through a lot together a major milestones together um what i have here is the queen of cups and the Knight of Cups. And what this means to me is, you know, they're in the same environment, in the same atmosphere. They could be the same types of people. Like, they, they have a very similar upbringing, similar history, same environment. And because of that, there's compatibility. And it gets to the point where, you know, sometimes when we're very, very comfortable with the other person, um we tend to as well take them for granted and we tend to kind of um, let the passion you know kind of diminish in the relationship because it's gotten too comfortable I feel that's what it feels like to me it's a comforting familiar relationship so going back to the telephone I feel like some of you might have somebody that you're interested in, okay? And it could be, you could be in a relationship or you could be single. And I, I see a fire sign energy, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. I feel like, once again, this person is culturally very different from you. Um, you guys have totally different interests. 
and you guys are just very, very different from one another. And um, what I see here is the ox looking at the lion. So for some of you, it could be a Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, or, you know, um, I have as well Cancerian energy. And what I feel is, and, and this message, you know, I, I feel like you're thinking, whoever it is that you are eyeing, you could be single or married, but whoever it is that you're eyeing, I feel like they, they are in a different environment from you. They're, they're further away because the, the background is different. And you're waiting for communication and contact with this person. And you're waiting, you're, you're telling yourself, I'll go for it if they told me how they feel, if they reveal to me, you know, if they give me a sign, if they give me a signal, if they give me a message, if they give me a text, if they give me an email, if they just, you know, somehow reach out to me, I'm going to make a move, I'm going to go for it. And I feel like there's going to be communication. There's going to be communication. There are also... I, I just feel like they are, they're very attracted to you, but I feel like they understand in a way that you both are, you both want different things, or you both are on different paths, or you both belong to different environments. That's what it feels like to me. It's, it's, it's almost like this watery area is very comforting and very comfortable. But this fire energy, Princess of Wands, they want excitement. They want newness. And so they have an understanding that you guys might not want the same things. That is really hard to coordinate and it's really hard to move forward together. But there is going to be communication between you and this person. I'm also sensing as well. There is uh, somebody who's traveling long distances over water. There's somebody who, who's traveling by land, but they're going very far, okay? Um, and there's a sense here of, you know, send me pictures of your travel. Where have you been? Um, you know, show me pictures. So I don't know if these are just, it's almost like telling somebody, you know, I really want to see you, but rather than saying that, you're like, hey, um, take pictures of where you've been, I want to see. And then they send you like landscape pictures of, you know, of the scenery that they, they've seen along the way, rather than pictures of their face or pictures of, you know, selfies. So I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel that happening. Um... So, you know, be clear with your communication. Just tell them how you feel. I'm also seeing just uh, a lot of travel um, coming into the picture for you guys. Make sure you work out your logistics because I don't have completely smooth sailing energy here. So this is a six of swords. Safe passage, okay, when it's in the upright, when it's in the reverse position. This is sort of like needing to check our itinerary, needing to make sure that um, people are where they're supposed to. If so, for example, if you're staying with somebody, you need to follow up with them and you need to make sure they are where they're supposed to be. So travel delays could be, um, you know, getting a flat tire, for example. Travel delay could be um, booking a flight and then the flight is delayed. So it could be, you know, very severe or weather delays, inclement weather as well. Um, it could be very severe. It could be very mild, just like, you know, getting a speeding ticket. Like it could be very severe or very mild. But I feel like this is not a good time for you to do things, you know, to serve, uh, to um, get around, circumvent the law. So travel at the rightful speed and just make sure you double check your itinerary okay I don't see it being smooth sailing so I just wanted to give you guys a head heads up check your engine check your car especially check your tires um, I'm seeing the right side the right side of the car possibly the the front wheel the right side 
passenger side. Um, so, you know, once again, there's just, um, I do see visiting family, um, your mother might be traveling to come see you and you're worried like when is she landing I need to pick her up and things like that and it's somebody you care about so you're worried and then I also feel as well you know this um this this constant pacing back and forth you're very worried about something let me see where is the the pacing back and forth what is like the the top thing that Torian people are worried about why is there that pacing back and forth I have here five of wands possibly this is like conflict within family members with amongst family members ten of wands somebody's moving and I have here the hierophant which is your card so this is definitely concern about family somebody moving somebody who's um, coming to see you you coming to see them somebody who's making like a drastic move in their life so hence the pacing but I feel like underneath it is um, Wanting somebody to reach out, and you you are going to hear from them. That phone is going to ring, okay? But I feel like, you know, once it rings, you, you have the message that you need. But there are other things here that indicates to me, like family members, hoping that they're okay if they are moving, if they're traveling, when they're coming to see you as well. There's a lot of that pacing back and forth type of energy. Um, for those of you who are in, in, like, publishing, it could be social media, it could be, you know, a uh, publishing a book publishing a play publishing something that other people are taking a look at and appraising so it could be like a draft it could be like a legal briefing it could be uh, even an essay for your teacher so any type of thing that you're publishing uh, it looks really good okay it, it looks like it's very very well received and I feel like you know you're gonna um, you're gonna fascinate the, the, the readers or your audience. You're going to captivate their attention. It's going to be well received. If you're uh, publishing for a grant or some type of funding, it's like full speed ahead. It's going to, uh, you're going to get that grant or that funding. Um, so I feel like they're saying a, a, a literary piece that is very persuasive. So a lot of it seems to me like legal writing or technical writing. And then um, for those who are, you know, doing like uh, fiction books or publishing a play or something fiction, it's still going to be very well received. I just feel like there is a little bit of just a few minor changes that they're editing. And for those of you who are publishing through online content, if there's graphics, I see somebody coming through to tell you to kind of like rearrange it, but I don't feel like they're uh, telling you to change the content completely. It's still going to be your content. It still has your signature and your, your, your tone and your voice and your sense of humor on it, okay? So Taurus, that is all that I have for you. I hope the reading is helpful. Um, once again, you know, um, tell people how you feel, okay? It's going to make life so much easier. All right, I'm going to be back in uh, January and uh, hopefully I'll get it out a few days early for you guys. And I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful holiday season and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.